going back to school after a long, exciting summer with your family and friends can be a bit rough. But look on the bright side, you will be going out tomorrow in your new shoes, your new bag, your new hairstyle, almost new everything to kickstart the school year. And if nothing else, a new attitude and a new opportunity to be better and do better. Think about all the fun you will have learning and exploring with your new teacher and classmates. Stay focused and enjoy it all. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I am Theodore Henry. We have an interesting show lined up just for you, so stay tuned as your favorite magazine unfolds. <laughs> The Office of the Children's Advocate is very aware that we have some parents who get particularly anxious at the start of a new school year. And so we really just wanted to share with you a few tips that you can utilize to help keep your children, especially the very young ones who are going out for the first time, nice and safe from sexual abuse. Parents need to recognize that the private parts, as we call them, or the genitalia, are regular parts of the body. And so in teaching your children about the forehead and the nose and the hand, you can also teach them the names of these body parts because that does two things. It puts them in a position to speak about these parts when something is going wrong. And it also tells them that even though they are private parts, it's not too private to talk about, particularly with a parent. Children need to know that there should be no secrets between them and their parents or guardians. Oftentimes, when persons want to abuse children, they tend to encourage them to keep a little secret. You know, this is between me and you. But from very early, parents need to establish with their children that the lines of communication are open. Mommy and daddy, or auntie and uncle, or whoever is the responsible adult in that child's life, can actually have a discussion, age appropriate of course, about anything at all that may be troubling the child. The third tip, is that parents need to cultivate throughout the child's lifespan that environment whereby the child feels comfortable to speak. Conversation should not be off limit, topics should not be taboo, and you really need to get to a stage whereby you have teachable moments, we call them. So we see a lot of things reported in the newspapers, sometimes on the nightly news, and we can use some of these instances of horrible things that are happening to other children to start little discussions with our own children to give them tips as to how they can avoid or prevent, um, perhaps completely, any such reality happening to them. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm Well I did I make the difference and I did I take a stand Let me dare to think of someone else who's in need of a help name The Development Bank of Jamaica provides loans for micro, small and medium sized enterprises so if you are interested in starting a business or seeking an advance to improve the one you already have get all the facts Next. Welcome to Get the Facts, a program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. Today we are discussing the critical issue of access to financing by micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs. The Development Bank of Jamaica, the DBJ, has been facilitating this process and in studio is General Manager of the Strategic Services Division, 
Christopher Brown. Mr. Brown, welcome to the program. Thank you very much what, for having me. What a big title that is. What does what does that what do you do? <laughs> At the Development Bank, there are many activities that I'm responsible for. Um, mm. The primary one is capacity development for yes, the bank. Yes. Um, but I'm also in charge of strategic, strategic planning right. and research and product development okay. for the Let's bank. start with the MSMEs. What are the services you learn? We know that people that need money and they are considered to be the engine of growth as it relates to growth and development, yes? Right. So what services do you offer to them? Well, one of our primary services, as I mentioned, is capacity development. Yes. So we understand that MSMEs, in order to operate their businesses more efficiently and even get investors, whether they are going for a loan or a private investor, they themselves need to be ready. So we have a number of different programs that gives grants and technical assistance to help these MSMEs to understand how to operate their business better. It could be training programs to teach you how to do proper accounting. Um, we have programs that allow you to actually get the accounting services done get business plans done, get marketing plans done. I would say a number of the different requirements that the banks will say you need to have in order to access loans. So there are a number of different programs we have. We give grants of up to $4 million dependent on the different program that will allow businesses to test their ideas, especially if what they're doing is very innovative. Grants mean that they don't have to pay it back, right? That is, that is so correct. So $4 million. Right. So yes. some other programs, we have a program currently called the Ignite Program, which is focused on innovative businesses. So somebody mm -hmm. bringing a new product or a new process to the market. Um, they were able to get $4 million to be able to develop that prototype and help to bring it to the market, so to com make it commercially viable. Yeah. Um, there are other programs we have, which is our voucher for technical assistance program, which allows any business to get up to $200,000 in grants to be able to get the necessary documents that I mentioned, get a business plan done, get your accounting done, get your financial statements done, as well as I think there are at least 20 other services that you can get access to with that particular program. With that money that you don't have to pay back. So how, how does that work though? How do you help in this regard? Do you actually have a technocrat who sits with the persons and help them to do the business plan or the, what do, that's how it works? Well, how we, currently there's a portal, dbjvoucher.com, that you can visit and it will list all the services that we offer. It will also list the accredited business development organizations which you can go to. So you'll get a voucher, you carry it to one of these technocrats, technical service providers, and they would be able to give the necessary assistance that you require based on the voucher that you particularly have. So how do people know about these facilities? What are you doing to ensure that people know about these facilities? Well, there are a number of different marketing campaigns that we run. Um, opportunities like this where we we come here, we tell people about the different programs we have. We partner with the approved financial institutions or commercial banks or microfinance institutions or other financial institutions who offer our services to let their clients know about these particular services. So, so the approved financial institutions, these are regular banks? That's correct. Yes, well, yes. in addition to commercial banks, we have credit unions that are approved financial institutions. So SMEs that want DBJ financing can go to 23 different financial institutions across the island, across the island. island to ask for a specific DBJ mm -hmm. loan. And what they will get are loans at concessionary rates or concessionary terms. So either lower interest rates than what you would normally get walking into the bank or for longer tenures or a longer time for you to repay the loan. Maybe it's normally five years. In this, you can get up to 10 years. Right. So you have some control over the interest rates that the institutions will lend? Well, dependent on the program we have, we indicate to the banks that they should not lend above a certain amount. So it isn't, the misconception out there is that we lend to the banks and then the banks add on a lot more interest rate and makes our money more expensive. But it's quite the contrary. What we do is we indicate that there is, let's say a maximum that the interest rate can be to try and ensure that MSMEs still get at concessionary rates. All right, tell me, who is a who is MSME? A, is MSME, right? Okay, MSME. Well, it's micro, small, and medium-sized right. enterprise. Um, who is micro? Who is small? What? What? Micro qualifies is 
if your annual revenue is less than 15 million J, you'd qualify as a micro entrepreneur business. If you are less than 75, so between 15 and 75 million annual revenue would be a small business. And then a medium sized business would be 425 million or less. Okay, all right. So I need a loan from DBJ, not from DG, DBJ, but through your facility. Right. The first thing I do, I approach the bank or the institution right. and I say I would like to, what, what's the step? Right. Tell us about So when steps. you go to the bank, any of these financial or approved financial institutions, you indicate that you want a DBJ loan. Um, they will tell you there are different requirements that you need to bring. Maybe it's a business plan, a marketing plan to show that you have some kind of management capacity. Yes. What you can do at that point in time is log on to our voucher portal, apply for a voucher and carry it to one of these service providers. Okay. After you get what the banks have asked you to provide, you can go into the bank and then request a particular loan amount. Let's say it is $10 million you want to borrow. They would typically ask you to have collateral to be able to secure the loan. This is where DBJ's credit enhancement facility comes okay, in, right. where we will yes. guarantee yes. up to $30 million or 80% okay, of let's, the let's, loan. Let's continue with this discussion on the enhancement fund when we return from the break. Okay. Understand. Productivity is the way to go for all us Jamaicans. Small business, big business, small and young. We are tell every woman and man. We want growth and prosperity for your better nation with a building plan. So we can build our product and sell our product and put more money in our hand. Our economy can rise to a level and build a better nation. Productivity to move forward on this land. Productivity, that's the way to go. We should understand. Productivity. That's the way to go, we should understand. Productivity. Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We continue our discussion with Christopher Brown, who is the General Manager for Strategic Services Division at the Development Bank of Jamaica, the DBJ. Mr. Brown, when we were going to the break, we were talking about the Credit Enhancement Facility. Right. Tell us about that. Okay, so the Credit Enhancement Facility is really a guarantee program. So it helps businesses that don't have enough collateral to get collateral support from the DBJ. So currently, our program allows for us to provide a guarantee of up to 80% of the loan amount at a to a maximum of $30 million. So if a small business is borrowing $30 million, DBJ would provide a guarantee for 80% of that. So 20% or just about is what the MSME would have to find to be able to get access to the facility. And we think this is a critical driver for the ecosystem, the, yes. the marketplace at yes. the moment. Yes. because. We understand that businesses, small businesses may not have enough collateral to be able to access the necessary financing to improve their operations. So we've introduced this particular program. And what we really want is we want the banks to recognize DBJ as that key facilitator. So any bank that is interested in lending MSME loans needs to take advantage of the credit enhancement facility. Right. So you just guarantee 80% of the loan without what, without anything, just as, as we, like we, that? We, we, are, we believe strongly in the development of MSMEs, and we want to really partner with our banks to be able to make that a reality. And the banks themselves may see it as kind of risky for lending to MSMEs, so we are stepping in to really help them to lend more to micro, small, and medium-sized oh, okay. enterprises. All right. Other services to the MSMEs, tell me about. Okay, so I would mention two other services that yes. we have. Um, we're working on a new program currently called Reverse Factoring, which allows businesses who, small businesses who normally get paid in 60, 90 days, you know, different credit terms, and it takes a long time for them to actually get paid, for them to be able to be paid early. Yes. So when the program starts, 
it, you would see MSMEs being able to get paid within five or 10 days versus waiting 60 or 90 days to be able to get funding. So it's a very innovative product that we're looking at launching, which should be launched by the end of this year or early next year. And it would help businesses to get the working capital, the, the money that they need on okay. a quicker basis right. to be able to right. turn it more efficient. Right, efficiently. and this will provide a release of the funds Correct. faster. Correct, okay. good, Correct. Good, Correct. Good, good. And then yes. another program that we have is our venture capital program, which allows businesses to get equity investment. So there are two different types of money that you would get. One is a loan that you'd have to pay back on a monthly basis. And then the other is equity, which is really some kind of ownership in the business where there is dividends that is paid more as return. And that is patient capital. So it's not intended to be repaid immediately, but you can take a longer time to be able to pay out anything out of your business. So it really helps your business. It's Money that doesn't require a return immediately, but over a longer period of time. Doesn't, re doesn't require them sending you, going to the bank to pay back money. So it's a, so it's like a 60, 60 day, day. It's probably the, more like a five-year five kind of time span. Yes. So okay. an equity investor, the funds that we have, they would look to invest in businesses. And yes, they expect to get a return, but they expect to get a return over a longer period yes, of time yes. instead of on an ongoing basis. And that is also through the banks? No, it's through different funds. Fund. So we invest in private equity yes, funds, yes, and yes, those yes, funds yes. will then invest in yes, yes. small and medium-sized enterprises. Good, we good, we actually good. have a fund that we're planning to launch next year called the SME Fund. Um, it wouldn't be a DBJ SME Fund, but we are helping the private sector to set it up and invest in small and medium-sized enterprises. Yes, yes. What are some of the issues you're having with MSME owners who are, are not coming forward because you have all of this money to unlend, but I've heard the cry all the time that mm -hmm. boy, people are not taking them alone. What, what are the problems? And tell us what we're to do to ensure that we get the funding or to, to access the funding, yes. Right. I think there are a number of businesses who believe it is better to remain in this informal state. Yes. Um, but something we try to encourage all the businesses is that the more you, more formalized you get, is the more access you get to these services. So most of the services I'm mentioning, you need to be a registered entity to, to get access to. So we strongly encourage the formalization. The other thing is that a number of the businesses are not sure how to manage these operations. And that's one of the complaints on the bank side that the businesses themselves are not ready. The programs we have, such as the Voucher for Technical Assistance, the Ignite program, or other capacity building programs are geared at fixing that particular issue, helping businesses to get themselves more structured, yes, get their books yes. in order, have them be able to walk into a bank and say, this is, or to an yes, investor, yes, it doesn't yes. have to be a bank, yes. to say, this is what my business looks like. I'm a good business to invest in. So you don't leave them as soon as they get a loan, right? You will stay with them and help them as they build yeah. to become... After they get a loan, they can continue to accessing these services that we have to at, help at no them cost. to manage the business. Well, it's a, the programs that I mentioned are grant programs, yes, so right. there is no yes. cost to pay back the DBJ. Yes. There's another initiative called the... FETA, FETA? FETA. Tell, tell us about tell us right. about that. So FETA is another one of our capacity de development um, programs, which was really more on the side of financial literacy. So we're teaching micro entrepreneurs about the importance of managing your books, keeping particular records. It doesn't have to be this fancy accounting firm that you're going, but you can be using an exercise book and writing what you sell for a particular day as well as passing your money through a bank. There are people who have these cash-based businesses and there's no evidence that they are earning the amount that they say they earn. And then they walk into a bank to try and get financing, but the banks have no record that you are actually earning the amount you say. So we encourage businesses, if you sell something today, deposit in the bank. If you need to draw it out the following day, because you need to buy goods on a continuous basis, then you do that. But that indicates to the bank that you are actually making money and that you are a good client for them yes, to, to yes. lend to. Talk to us about the take-up of these offers that you have. Right. Well, it, over the past 
four years, we've supported over 3,000 um, MSMEs in getting capacity building, access to capacity building services. Um, ag again, whether it's in the voucher program or the FETA or any other capacity building program. And we've seen where this has had impact on these businesses. The businesses have been able to go into a bank and get access to a loan or even just manage their businesses more effectively and turn more revenue. The whole purpose of business is to be able to generate revenue so you can employ more people and grow. Mm -hmm. That's what we are about helping the businesses to do. Okay. Any any success stories you want to share with them we, before we go? We, we have many success the stories. stories. Um, yes. There are companies who have come through our programs within the university. They have accessed our grant from our Ignite program. They've gone on to borrow loans from a bank and also gone on to borrow getting equity investment as well. So right. they've gone through the full gamut of this, the cycle of business. So there are opportunities and we're urging our small and medium enterprises to come on out and get funds from DBJ, get help to do your business plans and so on. Thank you so very much yeah. for sharing with us today on this program. It was my pleasure. Good. If you are an MSME owner and need funding, make sure to contact the Development Bank of Jamaica at 876-929-4000 and speak with an agent. You may also visit their website, dbankjm.com, to learn more about their products and services. This has been Get the Facts with our guest, Christopher Brown, General Manager for Strategic Services Division at the Development Bank of Jamaica. To watch this program again, log on to our social media handle at YouTube forward slash slash watch JIS. You may also stay connected to our website at jis.gov.jm for more information. Until next time, I'm Anthros Campbell. Take good care. Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, celebrating over 20 years of investment in community development. JSIF has forged relationships with international funding partners, as well as private and public sector entities. Let us continue to invest to reduce vulnerabilities. Let us build our social capital and resilient infrastructures to ensure full participation in Vision 2030. JSIF, investing for community development. By now, you should have cleaned your shoes and maybe in the process of packing your school bag. But just so you don't leave anything behind, let's go over a few things that should be in your bag this school year. For infant schools, we're recommending a dark colored bag because we want to reduce the number of times we're washing the bags. And children play a lot, bags get dirty. We also want to ensure that in the bag, there is a water bottle. Water is important because as children play, they get dehydrated and this will actually affect how comfortable they are. So we want to ensure that there's water in the bag so that they're sipping throughout the day. Now, especially for preschoolers, as they're entering schools for the first time, we know that there is separation anxiety. One of the things that we recommend is a toy. It helps them to be just a little more comfortable with that transition to school. Another thing that we want to place in the bag is a blanket. Children need sleep time and so the blanket, a nice clean blanket, is good to add to the bag. Another thing that we recommend is a pencil case. We want a pencil case that is durable and one that can secure the pencils. Of course, you can't have a school bag without notebooks. One of the things we recommend is lighter notebooks for the children who are smaller because we do not want the bag to become too heavy. In the notebook, it's also advisable that you put an emergency contact number. What would be, would be recommended also is a change of uniform so that if they get dirty, they can change off. A clean rag is also recommended to dry their hands and also perhaps to wipe their faces as times get hot, they become sweaty, we need a fresh rag. For children who are transitioning to primary or high school, you will notice that we have a bigger bag. 
So let's look at what should go in the bag. First of all, there is a smart device that we're recommending, of course. You're going to refer to your school's policies regarding cell phones or other smart devices. But as we prepare our children for 21st century learning, if it is that the policy supports this, then we recommend that you ensure that there is a smart device so that the children can be using these to support their learning as dictated by their teachers. We also recommend hand sanitizer. In some situations, a teacher might want to keep the hand sanitizer for the student, and so you refer depending on the teacher or the school. Of course, we are also purporting hydration. We have to ensure that children remain hydrated. When children get hot, they become uncomfortable and this affects teaching and learning. And of course, as a partner of the Jamaica Moves campaign, we're also suggesting water as opposed to other sugary drinks. Toiletry is very important. So we have a Ziploc bag here and we have toilet paper and a piece of paper towel. And there is also wipes. Let's go to the inside of the bag. What's in here? We continue to ensure our children are equipped with the writing implements, but for security purposes, we suggest that you give them a case to house the paper scissors, the pens and pencils. There are also exercise books. Now these exercise books are a little heavier because as you know, primary school and high school require more note taking. So these are a little heavier. One of the things we must also have is a planner because homework is very important. So we recommend that you write down the homework so that you can ensure that those are submitted on the due dates. Of course, you must have the textbooks. Now, textbooks can be many and they too can be heavy. So depending on what homework is assigned, you might want to work with a class teacher to also store some of these textbooks. So only the ones that will support homework will make it home. And you know, weather is also unpredictable. So we recommend an umbrella, a lightweight umbrella, or a rain cloak if you have it. We don't want our children getting ill because this will affect their attendance to school and ultimately affect learning. And that is it for what goes in the bag. We wish you a successful year. All the best. It just makes sense that while we make hay as the sun shines, we should also save for the rainy days. Because even as we all strive to rule our own destiny, life holds some inevitable and unexpected outcomes for which we should be as prepared as possible. Get the help you need now through the National Insurance Scheme. The NIS offers financial security when it's most needed to all gainfully employed or self-employed persons who contribute to this scheme. Whether it's loss of income due to injury on the job, sickness, retirement, and or death of a breadwinner, there will be help waiting for you and your family. So if you are over 18 years of age and working, visit your nearest Ministry of Labor and Social Security parish office and get registered under the NIS. Start making your contributions in order to reap the numerous social protection benefits when that rainy day occurs. Email prunit at mlss.gov.jm or call 876-922-8000-13 for more information. Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll do this all over again. Remember to follow us on our social media pages and even check out our website at jis.gov.jf. Also feel free to send your feedback on today's show to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jf. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.